what is going on guys welcome back to another video so in this video we are going to be doing a little bit of integration with bubble and some external apps okay and so what i mean by that is that when you're building an app you have an app so for instance here's an app that i built in one of the previous videos and so what you're looking at right now is a self-contained app this is a blog app that i that we built in one of the previous videos and it's a very, very simple app. It displays a list of articles, and then you can click on an article, you can see the whole article on, on the one page, and then you can leave a comment. And so this particular app that we built is not integrated with any kind of external service, okay? And so there's a lot of things that you can do. You can integrate it. Maybe you can get weather report, uh, you can get some news, read RSS feeds, do all kinds of very interesting things. And in my opinion, this is really where Bubble shines with its integration, with its ability to integrate with external services. And so in this video, we are going to be creating a simple app that's going to send emails that's going to be integrated with an external service. OK, and so right now I'm going to go in, I'm going to start building a brand new app and then we're going to jump into this platform and I'm going to show you how you can use this a platform to send emails via your bubble app all right and so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get out i'm gonna start a brand new app and we are gonna build it from scratch we're gonna actually i'm gonna duplicate my existing app so i'm gonna uh, duplicate let's say this app right here and i'm gonna call it email client 2021 i'm gonna click on copy and it's gonna create a brand new app we're gonna clean it up a little bit and we're just gonna set up the the base. And so here I am in my brand new app and you wanna go into settings. Actually, you wanna go into plugins and you wanna make sure you have this API connector. You don't have this by default and the fact that I copied and duplicated an existing app means that I already have this plugin here installed. If you don't have it, just click on add, uh, add plugins and search for API okay and you will be able to install this this is the plugin you want that has 200,000 apps 200,000 installs okay and this is kind of what you want now when you have this uh, what you want to do is you want to build a simple app so we're just gonna have one page with a simple workflow and that page will and once they uh, fill out the fields and everything like that they click submit it's gonna go ahead and send an email and then we're gonna go to this other service and we're gonna configure it and I'm gonna show you exactly how that, that's gonna work. And so let's build a simple page that allows the user to send an email. So we're gonna create a group. And it's always a good idea when you're building an app to start with a group because a group allows you to, uh, to control a lot of the elements that are inside the group a lot easier, okay? And so we're gonna drag text here. Uh, this is going to be our text field. We're going to have an input field here. And so this is going to say two. Okay, two is just like with your email client, right? We're going to uh, copy and paste. I'm going to say, um, you know, from. Okay, to and from. And then we're going to do subject. Subject. And last but not least is the body. I think I'm not missing anything. If I am, I'm going to go back and fix it up. But I think that's about it. We're going to copy and paste this. And I'm going to copy and paste this. Now, this is actually, uh, this is kind of what we want. So for this, we have an input. We, should, we can have a multi-line input. I think it's always a better idea when it comes to uh, long fields, bodies, subjects, uh, stuff like that. So we have two, we have from subject, and this is going to be body. Okay, the body of the message. Now, the inputs, we want the inputs to have, you know, specific names that we can figure. We don't really care about the text fields, but for the input, since we're actually going to be reading the data, we want to make sure that we're going to call it in ways that it's going to be easy to access it later. Okay, so I'm going to call this input two. I'm going to call this uh, input from. This is going to be input subject. And this is going to be input body. Okay. 
So that is it. We have that simple email form and then we just need a button. We're going to drag and drop a button here. I'm going to center it horizontally and this button is going to be send email. Okay. And so now we have it. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. Let's remove the style and let's uh, make it. Uh, that's a little bit too big. Maybe 18. Yeah, that sounds about right. 20. Yeah, that sounds pretty good to me. I can change the font. Maybe I can make it uh, bold. Uh, let's see. Yeah, something like this. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, that looks pretty good. I could change other things. I can change the color. All of that is very nice. And what we want to do is we want to create a simple workflow. Okay. Now this workflow, what is it going to do? It's going to send a request. It's going to send an action. It's going to send a post request to the service. And we are not, we don't really care about getting any data back because we're not reading anything. This is going to be a simple post request. Okay, so we are pretty much done on this stage. I'm not even going to go ahead and create the workflow until we configure the API stuff. Okay, so the UI is done. Actually, we can even add text here. I'm going to center it horizontally and I'm going to call send an email. Send an email. And this is going to be a H2 dark. Yeah, that looks about right. Actually, let's remove the style, make it 36. Yeah, that looks pretty good. We're going to center it horizontally. We're going to center it inside the field. That looks pretty good to me. I'm obviously not a designer. This is more of a development channel here. So excuse my design skills. And so we're going to preview it. Yeah, it's a little bit messed up. Uh, let's see if we can fix it up a little bit. All right, so I fixed it up a little bit. It looks a little bit better now. Uh, the send email is a little bit off. Let's do this. Uh, let's fix it up as well. We're going to get it inside inside the group. And that should look a lot better. Okay, so now it's all nicely aligned. Okay, so now we have the UI. The next thing is the business logic, okay? You have your UI and then you have the business logic. Okay, we're not going to be storing any data here. So if you think about the MVC, the model view controller, we really don't have a model here because we're not storing any data. We have a view and we have, we're going to have a controller, which is our business logic. Okay, now for the business logic, we're going to be using an external service called SendGrid. And so perhaps Bubble has actually plugins for these external services. That's going to make your life a lot easier. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I want to use them and I want to integrate them via their API here in this video. And so if you head to sangrid.com, they have a generous free plan. You can start for free and, you know, for testing, for sending not a lot of emails, the free plan is going to suffice. So I already have an account. I'm going to log into my dashboard here. And I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do step by step. So here I am in my dashboard. You want to head to email API and you want to go into integration guide. Very important. So we're going to go to this integration guide and you have two options. We're going to be using the web API here. I'm going to click on this. And then it's going to ask you which of these languages we want to use. We're going to choose C URL or curl. We're going to choose that. We're going to go in here and here is where now curl is kind of like a tool that you use. And the reason I wanted to go here is because it shows us our API, right? It, you Essentially, you see the API, how the API is done. And you see it's sending a, a post request. This is the URL. It has two headers. And this is the body here. Very, very simple. Now, whenever you're working with APIs, you want to instead of you know, taking all of this code and start coding inside of Bubble, you want to test it first. And for testing any kind of APIs, I always use a tool called Postman. And this is postman.co and I'm actually logged in already. And I am looking at my workplace here and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. And so I'm going to have a separate video that's going to go in greater detail about how to use this Postman, which is great for testing and making sure the APIs work perfectly. But uh, right now I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to create a simple request. Okay. And so here I am, we're, we're uh, creating a simple request. I'm going to go into the post here 
and I'm going to copy exactly what's going on here just to make sure that it's working uh, because this is very important. So we have mail sent and then we have a bunch of headers, right? This is the first header. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to copy this and this is actually going to go in here, right? We have the key and we have the value. This is going to have our API key and then we have another header. This is the content type header because it's... Uh, it's actually JSON, JSON content type, and we're gonna copy and paste this here. And we got this. And then we have the data, right? And the data is just one big JSON, essentially, okay? And this is an object here. Now, before we do that, we need an API key, so I'm gonna generate an API. I'm just gonna call it API1. Click Create Key, and now we have the API key. You're gonna copy and paste this, you're going to go back in here and you're going to replace where it says SendGrid API key. Now, you don't want to share this key with anybody. It's a private key uh, simply because, you know, people that have the key, they'll be able to make requests. Okay, so this is very important. So we have parameters, we have body, we have authorization. Uh, we have all kinds of very interesting things. So for the authorization, obviously, you can put it in here. You can configure a bear token, and you can put in the token here if you want. This is probably a better way to do it. Uh, but we're just kind of doing it uh, with this approach, right? Now that we have our headers, the next thing we need to do is we need to configure the body. And the body is this request here highlighted, okay? And so what we want to do is we want to go into this body section here. And there's all kinds of ways of configuring it. You can do text, JavaScript, JSON, HTML. So we are going to be doing JSON here. And JSON is great because it's already in the JSON format here. So if you go in here and you copy all of this except at this quote here, you copy this and you paste it here as JSON, then you click on Beautify, it basically configures it for you already. And this is in the JSON format. Uh, simply because it, you know, our sample sample request here, this post request, is in the JSON format, and this is really good for us because Bubble also supports JSON. And what we want to do is we want to configure it real quick. So this is two. I'm just gonna put in uh, my email here. I'm gonna configure the from email. Let's say this is James at James.com, and then the subject, the yeah, ascending with Sangre is fun, and we can just leave this at that. And now we're gonna click send and we're gonna see if this actually worked, if I really did receive the email. So we're gonna hit send. All right, so I just hit send and I got this error message. The from address does not match a verified sender identity. Mail cannot be sent until this error is resolved. So I have to verify my identity. And so I'm going to do that right now. And so the way you verify identity is you go into settings and you go into sender authentication, and that way it can send emails that are as you, right? So that it's verified that it knows that you are who you say you are. So we're gonna go back, we're gonna try again, we're gonna go into body, and we're gonna try sending this email again. All right, so now I got 202 accepted. And so what this means is that as far as SendGrid is concerned, everything is right. All I need to do is check on my end if I got the email. But as far as SendGrid is concerned, I did. it did send the email successfully. I was successfully authenticated. It passed all the checks. And pretty much I should have the email. So I'm going to go ahead and check to see if I received the email. And so I just signed into my email account. And guess what I see? I see an email that we just sent using SendGrid's API. And so what this means is that we are perfectly fine. This works. And now all we have to do is make sure that we can do the same thing with Bubble. But now that we've done it here, we should be able to do it with Bubble without any issues. And so what we want to do is we want to go back to Bubble and then we need to configure the API, okay? So we're going to go into plugins. We're going to go to our only plugin installed here, which is the API connector. We're going to click add another API. We're going to call this SendGrid. Okay, SendGrid API. Uh, we're going to expand. We have one call, and this is going to be send email. Uh, SendGrid API, send email. This is going to be a post request, and this is going to be action. Okay, this is not going to be data because we're not expecting data. You want to make sure it's action here. And then you just copy everything. 
that you had set up before when you were testing it. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna pause this, and I'm gonna add headers here. Uh, content type is going to be, content type is gonna be application JSON. Okay, uh, this is gonna be here, add, add header is going to, uh, we're gonna add a new header. And we are going to take a look at our parameters. We only have one header here, content type, and then we have the body, right? And the body is gonna be JSON. So we're gonna copy all of this here. We're gonna go back to bubble, and we're gonna paste the body here, right? JSON object, and this is exactly what we want. So it says JSON object use uh, angle brackets for dynamic values. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna call this, we're gonna use angle brackets here. And as you can see, it has this key here, key and value, okay? And because obviously these are gonna be dynamic values, these will change depending on what we're doing. So we have email, we have from, we have to, uh, next we have the subject, we're gonna do that as well. We have the subject and this is going to be uh, from email subject and then we have the value, okay? We have the value. Now, you wanna uh, key these in, right? We have the key here and this is going to be, these are not private and we need to actually name these, okay? Very important. So this here is the to email, right? So I'm gonna put to, this is gonna be from, from, uh, this is gonna be, and so we have to, from, and then we have the body and the subject. So I'm going to change this subject. This is gonna be the body here. And now we have the keys and the values, okay? These are not private at all, we're gonna change that. And now we need to make sure that the values are set up correctly, okay? So we have two from subject body. So I'm gonna fill in my, uh, my information, my verified, verified email, two from subject body, and we're gonna click on initialize call to make sure that it's set up correctly, okay? Okay, I filled it out, we're gonna click on initialize call, and looks like we're getting an error. Oh, we forgot to authenticate, okay? We forgot to, to send this authentication header. And that is actually very easy to do. All we have to do is go back here. We're gonna go to authorization, and this is our bearer token, okay? And we're gonna go back into bubble, and we're gonna say authorization bearer, and this is our token here. Private is fine. Yeah, they're all private initialize call. All right, so I just issued the request and I got this response. And if you if you could look at raw data, this is what you see. So we, we got nothing back, we got nothing back, but we also did not get an error back. And so that, that's actually a good thing. And so hopefully this went through, our test went through, we're gonna hit save. And now we have this specific action request configured properly. And so I'm gonna go back to my email, I'm gonna double check if I indeed receive it, and guess what I have here? And guess what I have here? I have the email here received. So everything is fine, and remember, when you are sending a data type request, uh, typically it's not gonna respond with anything. You have to, uh, it's, it's gonna have like an empty response, it's not gonna have a body response, it's gonna, it's gonna respond with some headers, and that's actually successful. As long as you're not getting an error message, that's fine, all right, so now we saved everything here and now we can go out and we can finally create the workflow, okay? And so now you're here in the design. So when you go into send email and you click on start edit workflow, what you wanna do, you're gonna be on the screen. What you wanna do is you wanna, you wanna remove all of these uh, default values and you wanna make sure that you're using dynamic data. So I'm gonna go in here, insert dynamic data. We're gonna put, this is two, input to value, from is gonna be dynamic data, input from value. This is gonna be uh, input body, value, actually input subject, input subject, value, and this is input body. Input body value, and that's it. And now it should be able to send the request. So if you go to the design, and we're gonna preview it and we're gonna see if it's actually working. 
We're going to preview this. So I'm going to put, so the two could be anything. I'm going to put one of my emails here. The from needs to be one of the configured emails, one of the verified emails in SendGrid. And I'm going to do that. This subject from Bubble App. This is going to be body from Bubble App. Okay, so crossing my fingers, send email, and we should hopefully get the email back. And obviously, I should be displaying some kind of dialogue, something like that, but this should be enough. We're going to go back and guess what I have? Subject from Bubble App, body from Bubble App, and we have the email working perfectly. Okay. And so in the simple app, we were able to create a really nice workflow, and you can use this for building you, maybe your own email client, or it could have some functionality on one of your uh, SaaS apps that you're building uh, when it, you know you, you need an email form in order to contact help desk or to send somebody, or really depending on your use case. And so this is simply the beginning of integrating Bubble with all kinds of exciting apps, exciting API calls. And so I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about it. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you have any future suggestions, uh, what kind of apps uh, you're looking to build. Maybe I can help out. But let me know if you want any of these other integration videos that I should be doing in the future. So I really hope you've gotten value here. Uh, leave a comment, like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.